The power of the project is creating a familiar environment. So the key for us is breaking down, I think, what is a legacy model to something that is simple to the eye. I think both in built environment and the model of care and breaking that down to something that creates familiarity for our residents and families and staff. The site's located in Derwent Park, which is northern suburbs Hobart, originally placed on 220 acres of orchard back in the 1800s actually, which has got a, a really interesting history. Partnering with the architects, uh, looking at some of the smaller detail, even the colour palette was developed through the colour of lichen on the mountain that's the backdrop of Karonji, which is really clever. And sometimes you point that out, it's quite subtle, but I think quite powerful. The significance with what we've been able to achieve at Karonji is from the entrance through to the village itself, through to the gardens, the walkways, the cul-de-sacs and the houses, is a really complex tapestry that creates something that people are, are quite comfortable to enter. We collaborated with Thompson Adset for lots of reasons, but I'd say that the key purpose would have been their recognition in senior living design, but also their approach, being able to develop a scope and then deliver on the project. The relationship between operations and the built environment is a really interesting thing for us. Uh, with the Karonji team, we were able to deliver uh, hand-in-glove notions of how dignity, privacy and care can work with the built environment in a seamless way. And we interpreted that into the small house model of care and the town centre that was developed. Conceptually, the streetscape is sort of a normalised built environment with a cafe, a retail outlet, a community precinct, a wellness precinct. So these are sort of almost normal metaphors of suburbia that this environment replicates and mirrors. Each cottage here at Karonji is home to eight residents. They each have their own private bedroom and ensuite. The houses are being deliberately designed without corridors so that as soon as you leave your room you can see the kitchen, the dining room and living area. If a resident wants to use the kitchen, get something to eat or drink, it's fully accessible to them. So it's very much that normal pattern of life is how people live here. Colour is one of the techniques for allowing residents their queuing and wayfinding around the village. There are multiple queuing points and they allow residents living with dementia to live more independently. We know that architecture has the ability to reinforce and define people's behaviours and responses and by getting these things right in a dementia village allows people to live better. The way the building fits in the environment is the thing that really strikes me, that it's not vastly different. It's a part of its context and people wouldn't be intimidated in any way by coming to live here. We always knew we wanted a local architect to help in the delivery of the project and we were introduced to Steve Geeson who just undertaken a Churchill Scholarship studying world's best practice and dementia care. So we had a natural alignment. Karanji has two very distinctive components and one is driven around community and inclusion and the other is then the four cul-de-sacs as such which is that really great Australian term. A part of the landscape brief also was to actually make each cluster very distinct and very individual in what it looked like from a distance as well. So it became a clear wayfinding mechanism within the landscape which was to assist the resident to understand this was their cul-de-sac. The community spaces uh, have a very distinctive um, architectural response. They have the commercial awnings, they have a much more civic orientation around what they look like. You then move out into the landscapes and into each little cul-de-sac. You're finding three small houses. They all have this really typical Tasmanian typology of architecture, which is the front fence, the veranda, the front door. 
it's really a human scale, it's an understood scale, it's all of a single level, which is why we've also covered the landscape quite extensively. Karanji was a great opportunity to really push some of the core dementia design principles for landscape. So some of those are using a uniform pavement material that's free from clutter and other obstructions. What we were trying to do was allow residents to have the freedom to move around quite a large area uh, in a safe and secure way. Through planting, we've managed to provide a structure that includes sensory planting, sensory garden experiences. So each garden has its own set of colours, senses, species selection and so on. Being in Karanji today um, and seeing people enjoying open space and landscape is extremely rewarding. Julian loves to walk and loves to be able to walk endlessly sometimes and that simply wasn't possible in a, an enclosed environment. So the fact you know, that this is a village and people can walk about in perfect safety for as long as they wish and it's got quite, a, you know, quite an area. So that was one of the major considerations, but equally it was the level of care and the level of awareness of the condition and the fact that every feature of the home is designed to care for people with the condition. I think the priority for me is the feeling of somewhere where she is cared for as an individual. That sort of relieves me of some anxiety that I know that there are people who are very much aware of what Julian needs. The impact of Koronji uh, to the community and I think the principles of uh, say aged care design as a whole I think are profound. Being such a debilitating disease knowing that we can create an environment that is really helping them live uh, obviously fully uh, on a day-to-day -day basis I think is something that we, we all want to see and we've been able to achieve.